Hi, this is Misha. And today I just kind of felt like doing a little video on really a gun that is underappreciated and frankly is one of the favorites in my AK collection, just for its uniqueness and how they, how they built this thing. This is the Hungarian AMD 65 Sporter. The muzzle blast is present. Now for a history on the actual military AMD, we have a video about that, so this is just about this particular semi-auto variant, because it has an interesting history. These were sold for a couple of years by TGI, Tennessee Gun, with centerfire systems being really one of the major distributors. This is an all-Hungarian, all-FEG gun, right down to the barrel and receiver. Now, the AMD-65 was really one of the shortest, if not the shortest, and lightest guns of its day. It was a carbine version of the AKM-63. The AMD would have a 12-inch barrel, whereas the AKM-63 would have the standard 16. It would have a shorter gas system, which this retains. Not a whole lot shorter, but eh, three-quarters of an inch or so. It would have the front sight base moved all the way back, almost to the gas block. These are separate pieces, but they're very close together. And it would have this large muzzle brake on the end. It would have the same exposed gas tube and grill type handguard as the AKM-63. In the early AK, excuse me, AMD-65s would use the same wood grips, but they had trouble with those breaking, so they went to these plastic, they're kind of made out of a semi-soft, flexible, grayish green plastic. Some of them are closer to black. Then we would have this side folding stock, which is really unique to this gun. I can't really think of any other AK that has this exact style of stock. The hinge is its own thing. This one's really stiff on this gun, guys. Let me fold it over here. It's one reason I picked this one out when I was selling these. I like nice, tight stocks. There we go. What's neat about that stock, it doesn't leave a block hanging off the back. It's quite solid for what it is. Of course, the downside is you have one metal strut, which isn't the most comfortable. But you do have a rubber recoil pad, which is nice. They even put a little bumper on it, so when it hits the receiver, it doesn't scuff it up. And since these were originally made, the, the military's AMD-65s for um, tank crews, paratroopers, other specialists needing a compact Kalashnikov, it did its job very well. Any folding stock is usually a compromise just one extent or the other. Well, in the 1980s, we had some pre banned Hungarian guns brought in by Kastner, the SA-85Ms, both fixed stock and an underfolding stock version. Those are based on the AK-63, not the AKM-63, but the AK-63. After the 89 ban, KBI, would import a post fan version of the SA-85. It would be similar. It would have a wood thumbhole stock, no bayonet lug, no threaded barrel. They would quit importing those around 80, excuse me, 98, 99, when restrictions required a low capacity magwell, and it would turn into the SA-2000M, which was essentially the same gun, but with a polymer handguard in a polymer stock made by Choate. And some of the, at least the some of the SA-2000Ms would have this muzzle brake 
pinned on. And some would have the shorter AK, excuse me, the, uh, the AMD 65 gas system, and some would have the standard AKM, AK 63 gas system. So there's some variations in the SA 2000. Well, they would quit importing those pretty quickly, 2001, 2002. And for a long time, they were underappreciated, even though they were true Hungarian FEG guns, since they took 10 round low capacity magazines, single stacks, you know, there was a certain eh towards them. And while you could convert them, it required more work than some of the other guns of the day. That brings us to this gun here. Thinking back on it, I guess these started to appear around 2008, 2009 in that time frame. And no one really knows exactly how they brought these in, either as complete guns or maybe just, just barreled actions, probably barreled actions. I can tell you though that all serial numbers match, including on the receiver. And these came in the right size box, marked FEG, made in Hungary with the serial number on the box. So they were presented very well. However they did it, I think Tennessee Gun did it very nicely. We have the original 12 inch barrel with an extension pinned on, or spot welded rather. Some would have a single piece four inch Tapco extension. Some like this would use the original muzzle brake and then put on a two inch extension in between it permanently attaching the brake to the extension and the extension to the barrel. Either way, we're out to 16 inches, and all we really had to add was this much. That's why I never bothered with SBRing it, because if I did, we'd only be down to about right here. This would be how long it would be as an SBR, this without, so it eh, wasn't worth the tax to me personally. Your mileage may vary. We have the original hammer forged chrome line barrel, short proper gas system, for the AMD 65, I actually prefer the polymer handguards. For one thing, they're more comfortable because they're more rounded. The, uh, the wood ones are very square. Also, since we use the same hang, uh, pistol grip for front and back, back here we have this little notch where the trigger guard goes through. That's fine, it's pretty well supported. Up here we still have that notch, that cutout. But if you have a wood grip, these pieces tend to get snapped off very quickly on the wood grips. Moving back, we have a Hungarian bolt group, serial matching to everything else. It has a shorter gas piston to work with the shorter gas tube. Typical top cover. We have the AMD 65 shorter range rear sight. And the neatest part of all, probably, we have a Hungarian FEG receiver. This is roll marked SA2000M here. And it comes when these were sold with the standard Magwell. So they would bring these in as a low cap receiver and then open them up to take normal mags. I've got a tanker mag in it because that's the appropriate 20 round mag for an AMD 65. Plus it's just easier to get in and out because of the uh, foregrip. You can get a 30 round mag in these usually, but it's a much tighter squeeze. And of course we have the folding buttstock installed with the factory. Be that factory over in Hungary or in Tennessee. It is a Hungarian stock on Hungarian receiver. The one gripe I had about these, they have the front sling loop, but they did not have the rear sling loop. This is because the SA2000M gun had the sling swivel on the buttstock. So using that receiver style, there's no cutout. But all you have to do if you want one is just cut a slot and then put in a swivel, which I'm planning on doing this Sunday. So, for right now, I just put one of these plates in between the grip and the receiver. This just is squeezed in for a, sw a sling. Now, originally, the military version would have the standard Hungarian leather belt style sling. It's heavy, a little long, 
So to keep this gun slim and trim, I put a Bulgarian crank sling on it. It's light and thin and really goes with the aesthetic well. And it still uses the buckle system similar to the Hungarian. So it's a little compromised to functionality, but hey, it's my gun. I just thought we would share this because they're very... They, they weren't well known when these were even being sold as new. And they got down to like $399. And this was at a time when the Century Arms kit guns built by Century on U.S. receivers and with U.S. barrels were bringing $499 and up. So they were actually cheaper than the Century version and Hungarian receiver and barrel. They were just very underappreciated then and they really are kind of forgotten today. And there's not really much bad to say about them. They run really well. There's a little bit of magazine play because of the conversion from single stack to double, but not bad. I mean, this is no worse than most AKs. And of course, that's with the metal mag. If you put a polymer in, it doesn't have as much play. As you saw, the stock is plenty tight. Probably the biggest detraction is the finish. There's a couple of different styles. Both are painted. This one has the more matte paint finish. There's also a shinier paint finish that they used. And this finish is known for wearing off because it's almost a sprayed on finish. So if there's one complaint, it's that the finish wasn't applied very evenly. Sometimes you'll see spots where they missed or it would just wear off with cleaning and use. I found the matte finish like this one is a little better. I've also found the ones with the matte finish tend to have the two piece extension with the original break, whereas the ones with the spray on shiny finish have the Tapco one piece. That's not a universal rule, guys, not at all. It's just kind of what I've noticed because I, I moved quite a few of these guns when I was working with Centerfire 2010 or so with these, 2009, 2010. So I've probably had a hundred through my hands, and that's just something I've generally noticed. But I really think this is an under-appreciated, under-acknowledged gun. So if you find one of these TGI FEG guns, since there are no pre-ban AMB 65s, this is the this is the closest to an all-original, all-Hungarian. AMD 65 you can get and I think it's a really cool and interesting AK variant. Would I buy one of these for long range shooting or comfort or to scope? No way. This is a short compact gun just a little bit bigger and longer and heavier than say a, a, a crank in AKS 74U. Of course we're still firing 762-39 because that's just when it came out. But I just, you know, something worth checking out if one comes your way. I think these days they're bringing seven, eight hundred. So if you see one for under that, it's a good, uh, good value. I sold the last um, last time I had one that I sold, which was lightly used. It brought about seven. So that seems to be where the market's decided, and I think that's a perfectly fair price considering what Wasser's and Inpaps and everything else going for today. I just think it's a cool variant. And I was like having as original to import as possible. So uh, kudos for TGI for bringing this. Also FEG. Uh, as far as I know, FEG is no longer making firearms these days. Their, their firearms division's out of business. Has been for a number of years. So I suspect these receivers were amongst the last ones they made one way or the other. Well, if you'd like to share stories of your own AMD 65 guns. I know there's a lot of builds out there. Vector Arms used to do these quite a bit. Like I said, Century did some, and a lot of private builders did too, because you could get AMD 65 kits for little and nothing. Some people will build them as pistols, other people as carbines, like this one. So, you know, there, I know there's quite a few AMD builds out there, and we'd love to hear about yours. Well, as always, if you like the video, and could click like, that'd be great. And if you have not already subscribed and could do so, that'd be great too. And if you like AK stuff, we have a number of videos on other different AKs, both Hungarian and and from other nations, so if you could, check those out too if you haven't. This is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.